Take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 19, if you would. Revelation chapter 19. You pray for me this morning. I don't know how I'm going to... I, I, boy, I appreciate your praying for me already. I, I felt great this week. Had a good week. And uh, sort of back to normal. Got a lot done. Got a new Watchman broadcast coming out this afternoon. I hope, Lindsay, hope. And um, so anyway, uh, after church, I'll we'll work on that. And, and come back and be with us tonight. Four o'clock is when we start our Sunday afternoon service. We kind of, we made it earlier. That'll allow some of the older folk who don't like to drive at night to, to be able to be part of this. And uh, so for you to come, and uh, I'm going to continue the message and the teaching on, on hell and what does the Bible say about it. By the way, at this church, we don't disbelieve what God said. If God said hell's hot, then that's what we, that's what we believe. Amen. And uh, if your mama or your told you not to touch the iron because it was hot, were they lying? Because you tried it, right? Or this, this is my favorite. You go to the restaurant, you order your food, and they come out wearing these big old mitts and these gloves, and they say, now be careful, this plate is hot. The first thing you do is go, Shh, ow, that's hot. Waitress is going, I told you it was hot. God said hell was hot. So that automatically means I don't want to spend eternity there. Amen. So come be with us tonight, uh, this afternoon, four o'clock, and we'll uh, we'll continue our on that. Uh, you pray for me as I preach this message. I have no idea what what God is going to give give you today. I'm just going to give you the scriptures and and let God speak to your heart. But this message is where my heart is. It is where the focus of this church is. And that is, we believe that the Bible is the Word of God. We do not change the Word of God. We let the Bible change us. We do not direct what the Word of God says. The Word of God directs us and what we say and how we think and what we do. And I believe there's coming a day when the Word of God is going to have its vengeance on this world to a world abandon the Bible. A world and a nation and even Churches. I talked during Sunday school about this wolf who runs a mega church who claims that during the, during the communion service that Jesus himself showed up. He saw Jesus. Jesus handed him communion bread and he's, he's got all these brand new teachings and all these new understandings now because he saw somebody that he thought was Jesus and he's lying through his teeth and everybody's falling for it. And he's lying through his teeth. The things that he said about this quote-unquote Jesus does match what the Word of God says. And I believe the Bible first and every man's a liar. Amen. Revelation 19 verse 11. I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. I, I preach that and I want you to think about how right it is concerning your Bible. You're faithful and your Bible is true. Is there anything in your Bible that you think is wrong? No. Absolutely not. Nothing is wrong in, a, in the Word of God. So he's faithful and true, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his... Say this with me. His name is called the Word of God. Do you believe your Bible this morning? Say amen. amen. Our Father in heaven, we ask for your blessings today. Lord, I ask for your blessings. Lord, I, I'm just, Lord, I'm, I'm relying upon you. There's a million ways, Lord, that I could go with this message. I could preach on this. I could talk about this. And Father, I, I want your way and I want what you want said to be said to these people. The hearing of those people online, we ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would be magnified above all things in heaven and earth, and that your word, my Bible, would be magnified above everything, including name. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you, God, that you have not left this life up to us for us to figure it out. You have given us the book of life. You've given us, Lord, 
that lights our path, no matter how dark it gets, this Bible will light our path and show us the way that we need to go. This Bible are, is the pillars of fire that lead us in darkness down the road path to the promised land. As you are leading us, Father, you're leading us with your word, our Bibles. Father, I thank you for the faith that's in this church. I thank you, Lord, for every soul here. That when they read the word, they just believe it. Lord, understand everything. We don't, we can't comprehend, Lord, some of the deep things that are inside this book. Except by way of the guidance of your Holy Spirit. So, Father, I'm asking you that you would shine a light upon us today. That you would stand behind this pulpit. Jesus, that you would come and stand in my place. Because you alone are worthy to loose the seals and open up this book. So, Father, I ask that Jesus come, minister to these people, preach the word to them. God, that you would, their lives. God, that you would open up their eyes. You would open up their heart and give them a greater love and appreciation for this book than they've ever had in their life. Father, I know, Lord, these people, and I, I know them pretty well, and I love them. And I know, God, that sometimes they struggle on whether they're going to read the Bible or not. And Lord, we know and understand that it's the old devil working on our flesh, our rebellious, hellish flesh nature, wanting to be removed from the Word of God, and yet our soul and your spirit drawing us to the Word of God, and it's a battle every Lord, sometimes even it's a battle in my heart. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would give me greater strength to open up this book and read it and to know it. Father, not only, not only, Lord, that you help me open this book and, and, and preach it in people, but God, I admit before you and man that I need it for myself because I can't make it without the words that are in this book. So, Father, we're here today to magnify and uplift your word, to honor our Bibles as the word of God. Lord, bless it. Help us to understand it. Help me to preach it today. I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Uh, let's do this. Let's flip around our Bible. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Hold your place in Revelation 19 there. Stick your hand down there or a bookmark in there and turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I promise here. Uh, concerning Jesus, when Jesus rose up in the, into heaven, in the clouds, there was a promise given um, in verse 9 of Acts chapter 1. The Bible says, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus? which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. It's one of the greatest promises that we have is that when Jesus left, he sent two angels down and said, hey, don't worry, he's coming again. And I am looking forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you go back to Revelation 19, that's what you're seeing. Revelation 19 Verse 11, the Bible says, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white pony was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. The Bible says he's coming again. He's coming again. And the significance now, the significance of Jesus at this point being called the Word of God. There's an importance there. It starts years ago in our country. When in 1963, the Supreme Court ruled that it was illegal against the law to lead a, a public prayer in our schoolhouses. Do you understand that before 1960, teachers all over America would take their children and say, bow your heads, we're going to pray. And they would pray and they would pray in Jesus name and ask Jesus to bless that school. And what, what have we got to show for it now? Now that we've kicked Jesus 
and the Word of God, the Ten Commandments out of our... What do we have? Now they're coming in and blowing our kids away. Now that God is not blessing those schools, now we got hallways full of drugs. We've got hallways and bathrooms full of rapes and fornications going on in the school. We, our schools are some of the most dangerous places in America to be. God has removed His blessing out of our schools because man decided to take prayer and the Bible out of our schools. And God's not blessing that. And I'm going to tell you something. The churches, the churches that have decided to disregard the words that are in this book, they took the Bible out. I've, just, I've been listening to this preacher of a mega church who claims, I talked about in Sunday school, who claims that Jesus showed up to him personally and he saw Jesus face to face. The man's lying through his teeth. And for, I listened now two hours of him talk, quote unquote experience that he had with a devil that he called Jesus and he's nowhere talking about what the Bible says. He's talking about what he experienced and now he's got a new awakening and a new understanding of this and a new understanding of that and he's not promoting the Word of God and any time you have a church service where there's no God said in that church and wherever there's a void of and the absence of the Holy Spirit, I promise you a devil, a familiar spirit will come in that place and absolutely ruin that church and that's what we see going on. And what we have here is a vindication of the Word of God. Every church that abandons the Word of God. And when I say abandon, I'm not just talking about they, they close the Bible, they use it for a centerpiece on the altar or whatever it is, and they, and they speak for 30 minutes about this and that and the other, but they don't quote Bible verses. I'm talking about even churches, this Bible. We believe... In the King James Version, 1611, this is the Word of God. It has zero mistakes in it. It is living. It is powerful. It can, it can, it can seek out things in your heart and find things that you don't want found out. This Bible can do that. This Bible can save your soul. This Bible can bring the, hey, how was it that Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead? Did he wave his magic wand? Did he rub miracle oil on him? Essential? Did he put, what was that? What they put with them candles in your ear and they light it? Burn all that junk out? Is that what he did? He did what? His word raised the dead man back to life. This book's got power in it, amen. And I want you to get this. I want you to. Jesus is the Bible, and the Bible is Jesus. Who in here can say that? Jesus is the Bible, and the Bible is Jesus. Look at that verse again up on the screen. His name is called what? The Word of John. Turn, we got a double witness here. Turn to 1 John. Maybe here in a minute I'll get to my notes and I'll start preaching. 1 John chapter 5. What verse are we looking for? Come on, you ought to know this. Verse 7. There are three. Say this out loud with me. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the what? The Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Do you believe that? Turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. What does your Bible say in verse 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was what? So can I rightly say that my Bible is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is... Can I... Will I be doctrinally correct? See, I want to be correct now. I want doctrine to map. Doctrine matters. And if I say, this is God... This is everything that God is. This is not just words that God sent. This is His Word. And God did not leave us alone and just let us make Christianity up as we go. He gave us the book to follow. 
Who in here, raise your hand, that where you work, guidebook that you must follow. A manual of some kind that you must follow. Raise your hand. All over the building. Every place of employment in America has got some sort of... I don't care if you flip burgers at McDonald's. In fact, they don't flip them anymore, do they? Back when I, I worked two days at McDonald's, so I had experience with it. Now they just press them down. But back when I was doing it, back in the old days, we used to flip them by hand. We had to mash them down. And you know what? That was all written in a manual that I had to learn how to flip burgers. And I want to tell you something. If we're not doing it by the book, the book is coming one of these days and is going to have his vengeance. The book's going to have his day. Turn to, turn to uh, Exodus chapter 32. Turn there. Exodus chapter 32. See if you can beat me there. Exodus 32. Come on. You ain't here already. Oh, look there. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Watch this now. Exodus 32, verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. Moses is a foreshadowing of the coming of Jesus Christ. And as he comes down from the mountain, he does not come empty-handed, my friend. He comes down with two tables in his hand. Why is there two tables? Because your Bible has this part and this part. The Old Testament and the New Testament. God speaketh once, yea, the Bible says. And here's Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with the two tables in his hand. And they were the writing of God. And Israel was supposed to follow, not Moses. They were supposed to follow the book. God did not say, Moses, now go down and, and just make some sort of agreement with them that as long as they do, then they can go in the promised land. That is not what God said. God wrote down His law, wrote it down, made it plain, wrote it plain upon tables, sent, sent it down with Moses and said, here's the tables of God, here's the writing of God, this is the Word of God, will you follow it? My question to you today is, will you follow the Word of God? Will you follow the Word of God? Will you follow the Word of God in your personal life? I'm talking about that part of life that you don't let other people see. I'm talking about that private life, that secret life, when no one's around and you're doing your own thing. Will You see, it's one thing to sit in church and say, Amen, I love the Bible, Amen, boy, preach that Bible, King James Bible. There are churches who do that. The people are full of sin. They won't follow the book. You see, if we're going to be a church that follows the Bible, then let's follow the Bible, not just when we're in church, but when we get in the car and going home, and when we get home and we start doing our... Everybody, you know how to... In the, in the house doing their own thing. Are you doing your own thing according to the Word of God? Does the Bible follow you in your secret, private life? If not, it's coming back one of these days. And the very book, the very word that you get in your private life is going to judge you publicly do you believe that the two tables of the testimony were in his hand the tables written on both their sides on the one side and on the other were they written and the tables were the work of god and the writing was the writing of god graven upon tables i'll just place there in, his, in exodus i'll leave it up on the screen and turn to revelation chapter five revelation chapter five try to beat me there come on revelation chapter stop it Revelation chapter 5. Look at this. Look at this. Exactly what happened with Moses was a foreshadowing. In Revelation chapter 5, John said, I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a what? You're holding that book in your hand. A book written within and on the back side. Look at what Moses had in his hand. When he came down with the two tables of the testimony, both sides of that. Moses is a foreshadow of Christ. When Christ came down the first time, he came down by the book with the word of God and he gave that word to those people and some of them accepted it, but most rejected it. He comes back again. He's coming down with the book again. He is the book. He is the Bible. He is the word of God. And when he comes again, he's coming down exactly the same way. He is the word of 
God. Will you follow it? Will you believe it? Will, do the Bible rule your home? Will you let the Bible rule your marriage? Husbands, will you be what God called you to be? Not a Does the Bible give you an allowance to smack your wife? No. Fact of it is, if you ever lay a hand on her, somebody ought to pop you a few times. But if you lay a hand on her, you know what the Bible says? You don't love her. The Bible says to the husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And be not bitter against her. Will you let the Bible govern? Can we let the Bible govern and rule over the wives? It'd be amen. Okay. Will the wives honor God's word and reverence their husband? You say, well, you don't know my husband. He's a jerk. God knows your husband. God knows that the worst husband in the world can be won by a godly wife. Do you believe that? How do you think my daddy started going to church? My mama. My mama. Will you let the Bible govern how you raise your children? What's wrong with America today? Who's raising their children according to the word of God? Nobody is. I won't say nobody. Most people are not. Does the Bible say that we ought to use a rod on our children? Yes. Does the Bible say that we should put them in time out? Does the Bible say that it's okay for the fathers to be mean and spiteful to their own children? Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, the Bible says. You can be a disciplinarian and be mean about it in your, in your guts. Because you provoked them to anger is all you did. Ain't that a shame? Will we let the Bible govern how we are at the workplace. We're getting into it now. Where the Bible teaches us as workers to accept the pay and not fuss and moan and whine and complain all the time. Which is better for you now? And let God promote you and bless you. Or stomp your foot. Threaten to walk out. And say I want more money or I'm going to walk out of this place. Which is better? Which, let me ask you this. Which is God's way? We don't normally think that way in America anymore, do we? There's issues of life that you deal with on a daily basis that you must put into practice what God says in His Word. Because God is coming to judge every single one of us, including me. And I'm not your judge. I wouldn't want you being my judge. I've already worried sick enough because I know I'm going to be judged by what's in this book. And I'm scared to death. Because I know there are things that I have not kept in God's word. Amen. Back, back in Exodus 34. By the way, when Moses came down from the mountain with the tables in his hand, he did it twice. He's 2nd, 34, 27. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Verse 29, And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two to his hand, when he came from the mountain, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Look in your Bible in uh, Matthew 17. Matthew 17. See if you can beat me there. Got it? I beat you this time, Alicia. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine. How? As the sun, his raiment was white as the light. Turn to uh, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. What does your Bible say? I got there. I beat you. <laughs> Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, you in. That's not a typographical error. He meant the Son. The Son. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You cannot stare in at the Son. Amen. And you cannot stare in the face of Jesus. It's so bright. Amen. Of righteousness arise with healing in His wings. By the way, when Jesus comes, He's the Word of God. Do you know what He's going to do to this earth? He's going to heal it. I, I just got this little idea of how the thousand year reign is going to be. Number one, all the greedy politicians are gone. Number two, there is no health insurance. Do you know why? The Word of God. He said He sent His Word and healed them. I believe that Jesus is going to heal the diseases of mankind on this earth. And you won't need health insurance. You won't need Obamacare. Amen. The stuff that I like to see. When Jesus comes, He is the Word of God. And He's going to rule according to what's in this book. You know what he says? Hebrews chapter 10. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. He's going to do it according to the book. Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians 2. You can turn there, but I got it up on the screen. The Bible says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. I'm working on a little watchman script called the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's about the Antichrist. Only he who now letteth will let until be taken out of the way. And then shall come the Lord shall consume with what? How is he going to destroy the Antichrist? The spirit of his mouth. Is that his, is that his bad breath? Did Jesus have halitosis? No. The words that come out of his mouth is what number one. Watch this now. Let's say in this church there's a little piece of the man of sin. Right? You know what it is, don't you? I'm going to have everybody stand up and confess what that... No, I'm not going to do that. You've got a little piece of that man of sin in you, don't you? What will do when you start reading it? It'll reveal it. This Bible will reveal your dark side. And when you get sick of it and tired of it, you know what the Bible will do? Consume it. So that you're not that man of sin like you used to be. Roy? Roy! He's on guard out there. I know he is. Did the Word of God dis destroyed it? Hadn't had a drop in how long? 29 years. You'll make it. You know why? One day at a time he reads his Bible. I, I remember a guy named Max Palmer. Max Palmer came to this church back in 1982. Max Palmer was in the Guinness Book of World Records for being one of the tallest living men. He was 7 foot 11 inches tall. He started out life as a wrestler. Then he started in some of these monster movies they made back in the 50s. You know them real cheap ones? They got him because he was tall. Max Palmer had, he had money. He had fame. He had all the alcohol he could drink. He had all the women climbing all over him because of his size. And he had every so happy 
that he checked himself into a cheap hotel one time with a whiskey bottle and a pistol and he was going to take a drink and he was going to put that pistol in his mouth because he was so happy with life and blow his brains out. That was the man of sin. The son of perdition. And Bless reached over for that pistol. His hand was guided to that old Gideon Bible sitting there on the nightstand. That was back when they had them out and not hidden. And it was a King James Bible. And he picked that Bible up and he read John 3. For the very first time, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Or got down on his knees. Seven foot, 11 inch tall giant got down on his face before God and said, God, will you save me? I don't want to go to hell. And from that moment on, he went everywhere he could preaching. He used his height to get a crowd, and he would go and he would tell them what the Word of God did for his life. See, the Spirit of God's mouth, he shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. If you are ever in a place where there is darkness, let the Word of God come down and dispel that darkness and give you light. Who would have to have that so far? Amen. Hebrews 4, trail for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God, this Bible knows not only what you did, but what you intend to do. You out in this Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 17, watch this. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests of Levites and it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all this law. When Jesus comes back, he is the word of God and I promise you he is going to reign according to this book. Now, that is, that's sometime in the future, right? Yes. But it's also right now if you let him in. If you will let heaven, he'll, bring, he'll be the word of God in you. And as a king, he will rule in your heart and never fail you one time. Whew. Say this again with me. Jesus is the Bible and the Bible is Jesus. John chapter 12, verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words, and believe not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. But he that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken shall judge him in the last day. They're, watch this now. They're going to call us racist. They're going to call us misogynist. They're going to call us homophobic. They're going to call us all kinds. Because we believe that this Bible is inerrant. And if God said that this lifestyle is wrong, then that lifestyle is wrong. And God said so. They hate us. And that hatred is going to continue to grow and to build. And mark my words. At some point in this country, it will be illegal for me to say homosexuality is an abomination before God. Or any kind of fornication outside of the marital bond between a man and a woman. That is wrong. It's going to be illegal for me to say that. And I'm going to say it anyway. Amen. Because I hate people. Not because I'm a misogynist. Not because I'm a homophobic. Not because I'm a xenophobe. What is a xenophobe? Huh? So I don't like people of other cultures. Of people. I just don't happen to like some of their food. Okay? <laughs> that doesn't make me a hater. But those are going to be the accusations. And it's not us that's judging anybody. It's these words. 
that's against this Bible. And this Bible then is going to judge them on what this Bible says. So let's let the Bible be the Word of God and let it do what it's going to do. Amen? The Bible never fails. Isaiah 55, verse 5, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, returneth to me void, that shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Now I want you to think of two things. Number one, your Bible, and number two, Jesus, because Jesus is the Word of God. God sent His Son the first time to do exactly what God wanted Him to do, and He did it. Hong Moon of Korea said that Jesus failed to do what God wanted Him to do when He came. It's a lie. He's not capable of failing. He's the Word of God. And if God sent the Word of God to do something, then the Word of God will do something. And when the Word of God is coming again, what God told them to do. Now you take that and you apply that to your life. This Bible is powerful and it's right. And if God sends His Word into your life to do something, you can count on it, it's done. Do you believe what God said? Somebody say amen. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is, and He is a shield of them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Don't add to God's words. Somebody say amen. Things like the Book of Mormon. That is adding to God's word. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Adding to God. Donald Walsh wrote a book called Conversations with God. This guy had a spirit pretending to be Jesus, talking to him. You know what the Spirit told him? That he believed it was Jesus. You know what the Spirit told him? That the Bible and books on religion do not actually convey God. The truth of God can be more felt than it can be read. That's a lie. It's a setup. That pastor right there is... Stovall Weems, the guy I was talking about in Sunday school, that says that Jesus, during their uh, communion service last Friday, or during, on Good Friday, and now he has all these new revelations about Jesus. I want you to look at where he is. This is him. Do you see where he is? He's in a tavern. What do you say, Roy? There's all kinds of spirits there, ain't there? Don't believe it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word of God. Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by here. I'm kind of moving through this fast because I know it's late. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. That's your Bible. And having on the breastplate of righteousness that shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's your Bible. Above all taking the shield of what? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by word of God. Wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Do you know where the darts are going to come from? And probably darts come as a result of you following the harlot woman down into her bed. And while you're wrapped around with Mystery Babylon, that's when the devil's throwing the darts. He's going to strike you in the liver. Once you, once you get shot in the liver, you're done. Now you listen to me. This book of faith, do you believe what it says? So do, do you believe... That this preacher saw Jesus. I don't, and you shouldn't. Because Jesus said, If any man say, Lo, here is Christ, or there, it's the Bible, or Bill Nye the science guy. 
For this, this is 2 Peter, for this they willingly are ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Bill Nye, the science guy, hates the Bible. He says the earth is uh, 150 million years old. Man goes all the way back millions of years to Cro-Magnon man, and then there's chicken man or whatever, Neanderthal man, the monkey man, and then there's us man. And he don't believe a word of it. He's a liar. He is willingly ignorant of this book. My appeal to you today is, don't be. It's not a seed. Bill Nye can teach you all about evolution. But he cannot teach you about where your soul is headed. Your Bible can. Your Bible can save you. And nothing else. This message is all about the Bible. 1 John 2, 14, I've written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. I want all you young people. And when I say young, let's make it below 50. This world is offering you a lot of sin. And it's very easy and it's everywhere. It's with all your buddies. It's all over the internet. It's all in TV. All the music you listen to. My life. The music that you're listening the music that's out there right now is full of sin. And the devil's just singing to you his little songs. And as he's saying, come and sin with me. Come and sin with me. It's so easy. That's the song. I just made that up, by the way. And the only defense that you'll have is this. See, it would be great if, let's say, you didn't want to sin anymore. And you, and you tied them to your arm, handcuffed them to your arm, threw away the key and said, everywhere I go, you're going to go. And if I want to go run off and do some kind of sin or get involved with somebody, you jerk me real hard and don't let me do it. See, that would be, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? But it would be better if you would just bind this word to your heart. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that, what? I might not sin against thee. Bind it in your heart. Because it's coming back and it's going to judge everybody based on what it says. What does that say? Is that what they did in Sunday school? Thy word, turn, turn around and show that to everybody. Thy word have I hid my... Bow your heads. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Because I don't want to know. But you young people. Sin is everywhere, isn't it? You walk out of this church and immediately you're vulnerable. And you're tired of it because you know what the devil's trying to do to you. He's trying to get you deep into it to where you can't get out and you're going to go to hell. And you don't want to do that. What I'm going to do, instead of you raising your hand, I'm just going to assume that everybody under the age of 50 would raise their hand. Because you know what I'm saying is true. And for you folks over 50, then it's pride that's what you deal with, pride. Nothing to deal with anything else. But I want you to pray right now where you are. 
This is the invitation. You're going to stay right there. Or if you really want to come down here, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you. But you're going to pray right now. You're right now. Heavenly Father, I love these people. I love them. And God, I know what they deal with. I know these, I know these young men. And I love them. I love them to pieces. But what's out there? It's very alluring, very attractive. And it's easy to fall into. And Lord, more than likely, we've all done it. Felt the trap that was laid for us by that sin, by that iniquity. And we don't want to be a part of it. And Father, I pray, dear God, that there would be a Bible in this church today. A renewing of reading, meditating, praying over, praying about, memorizing. Lord, put it on our phones and our tablets and Everything, Lord, that we have so that we can just pull up our Bible and read it any time of the day. God, take these young men, take these young ladies and attach your word, Lord. They go. You're there with them. God, forgive them. Forgive us all. Father, we've seen just enough of the devil and how he works and what he's got for us, Lord, to know where the trap is. And Father, I pray that each one of these, Lord, wherever they go, have a renewed interest in the Word. Love it like they've never loved it before. Read it like they've never read it before. Understand it, Lord. Give them something. Lord, I pray that you would give these people something this week. That would just bring them to tears, Lord, because of the God the first time they ever saw before. God, would you do that for them? Give them that token, that sign of just how wonderful that book is. And it'll fight sin for them. It's our shield of faith, God. It's all we have. Father, bless this message. Bless these people, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for their long suffering. God, let it be known that Bethel Church loves the Bible. And for us, there's nothing else but your word. We thank you, God, for hearing us. We pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said. Good morning.